Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we're coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday to you wherever you are. We see our friends chiming in from all over the world, so I'm going to say hi to some of you. Thank you for being here. Today's show is all about helping you to take your 2D artwork farther. So we're going to be looking at ways that you can take maybe an average piece of 2D artwork and make it something really special. We'll be sharing some methods and processes and we'll also be sharing our supplies and resources that we used. So I hope you'll stick around for that and we're also going to get to see some fun BFF creations as well. For those of you who don't know us, we are Living Felt livingfelt.com and feltingtutorials.com. We are based in Central Texas, and as you can see, we have friends from all over the world checking in, saying hi, it's all happening over in the live chat. If you're watching the post show, we hope that you'll comment down below and let us know your favorite takeaways. So I wanna say hi to Christina Peruk, Cindy Lillard, Tammy Daniels, some of our usual suspects, always love having you here. Hi to Marlene Coaster, Bonnie McDermott, so nice to see you, Pamela Miller, Donna Connolly, Meredith Maloney, man, y'all all are here. Bridget is here, Lynette is here, Peg Elliott. Thank you all so much. I hope today is interesting, insightful, and maybe even even spark some brand new ideas for you to take off on and we look forward to hearing your feedback both in the chat and the comments down below about your ideas around what we're sharing today so we're here with the most magical of fairies they've all been working so hard all morning packing orders and our um, favorite way to start a show of course is with a joke from our very funny fairy in the field fairy Kayla Hello everybody and happy Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you are all ready to rock and roll with us today in this special live hang. <laughs> well, I won't keep you in suspense any longer since we have tons of fun stuff to talk about. So, important question. Why does a space rock taste better than an earth rock? Why does a space rock taste better than an earth rock? Because it's a little meatier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Have fun today, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Kayla, and thank you everyone for putting up with our antics. It's always goofy around here, and we're so grateful that Kayla has assumed the role of being our funny fairy, because that's just who she is, absolutely. Well, she's talking about rocks, because today we're going to have a little rockiness in the show, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you think about that. So we're looking at ways that you can make money with your art, and maybe for you, felting is a hobby, maybe it's a passion, and and maybe you would like some ways that you can make a little bit of money with your art. Look, let's be realistic. Felting takes a lot of time. We can't bang out most pieces in a half hour uh, like it takes to do a Bob Ross show. That's okay. We're going to look at ways you can take a 2D work of art and turn it into something else and hopefully make some money from it or just spread a little more joy and share it with more people. Um, so we're going to be looking at a variety of processes, but we're going to kind of kick it off with a look at some of our BFF creations in 2D. Here's a quick little roll of some for you to look at. Look at these great pieces by Betty Green. Oh, I love these little lavender fields. They are fantastic. What a great lake scene that is. This, I think, is a great model for like what we're doing today. It'd be a great use for that. Very sweet little scene. Boy, these are all fantastic, aren't they, Jordan? Absolutely. <laughs> so cute. And I love all the colors and the landscapiness of them. Wow. I definitely can see using some of these artworks to do the project that we're doing today, but also for reproduction in prints. And we want to kind of help unravel that for you a little bit. Um, so the first thing you might be thinking of is, you know, how do you choose an art piece to print in the first place? How do you choose from your art what to print? 
And we want to make the suggestion that one idea is to ask your family and friends what are some of their your favorite pieces of what you have created. So let them look at some of your work and let them help you choose. You also have your social media channels, whether it's your personal page or any groups you belong to. Go with the pieces that get the biggest feedback, the ones that people are just kind of going nuts over and they're getting really excited about. These are the pieces that you might consider reproducing and selling in another way or expanding in another way. That's going to be one of the, one of the best ideas we have for you to choose your art. But we're talking about reproductions because something we all struggle with is pricing our original artworks. Like we said, felting takes time and it's not easy to price it. So we are going to look at some pricing calculations and suggestions for pricing these reproductions of your art. If it's, if it's your original work, then that's probably what you should really charge the most of anyway. So if you're looking at 2D art, maybe you haven't really started needle felting in 2D yet. We do have some wonderful projects that can get you started. Our Beach Huts is a great project for this. This was a really fun project we did on Wooly Wednesday, and there's a kit for that as well. Um, we also have a sample of that beach scene without the huts on it, so it'd be a good model for today. We have some other 2D projects like Hidden Lake. You might even be looking at doing something like, um, this is a little hidden lake where we did a small test piece before doing the large piece to kind of get our colors. And if you do any 2D work, you know that even making those tiny pieces can take time. But other projects might be um, an original scene you already have, like some of these fabulous pieces we just looked at, or maybe even a, a little more sophisticated piece than um, I'm sharing of mine today, like Breakwater Beach right behind me, which is a class in the school by Laura Ricks. Any of these would be good candidates for reproducing into a print and or working into these sort of custom prints that we're looking at today. So share your work, get feedback, get ideas about which ones to start with. And if you haven't started yet, try out one of our free projects or our um, really reasonably priced kits to fit that project and just get started with 2D and see how you like it. But all of the ideas we're sharing today can also be used for other art. You might do some things in watercolor or acrylic or mixed media. Maybe you're doing wet felting or even bigger pieces. These same ideas will convey that we're going to share. So if you have a piece that you like, you might look at it and just say, hey, this is frame worthy. And if you're feeling that way, that's a good indicator as well. I have this little tiny beach scene. Uh, this is just a little scene. It's very simple. It's very serene based on a photograph with the sky really bleached out in the clouds here and just a little bit of sand dunes. And this is my original felt but we can take something like this that's pretty average and turn it into something special. So if you're thinking, well, my artwork isn't that good or I'm not that good of an artist, I want to encourage you to explore this idea anyway because that's where I am. I'm just an average person in 2D. I don't have a lot of skill with depth perception or perspective or anything like that pretty average on that realm, but if you're having a good time, then just keep going and keep exploring those ideas. So don't worry if you're feeling a little unconfident about your pieces. Okay, so let's see where we are. Okay, we're going to look at the, at the process. So the first thing to do is just to make your artwork. And I have my piece, so I have a, a little camping piece right here on the table. So the first thing to do is to make your artwork. And in my examples today, we are sharing um, 2D needle felt on 100% wool felt. That's the first thing. So you can see, just here's the back of my piece, very little wool coming through the back. And this is the piece that I wanna turn into really a custom print, not a print just by itself. But if you have a piece that you wanna make a print all by itself, that's perfect. So the first thing to do is to create your artwork and then steam press it and then step back and evaluate its finishedness before you go spending any money on prints at all. So make your piece, steam press it, evaluate it. The next thing we're going to do is to take a photograph of it. It's very difficult to scan fiber artwork that's in 2D, so leave it in its entirety and let's take a picture. 
When you take a photograph of that picture, use your phone nowadays, which is so fancy, and see if you can get these grid lines on your phone. Use the grid lines under your settings so that you can get the horizon level and you can make sure that you're not shooting at an angle. If you're getting any shadow on your piece or if you're getting uh, it's too granule, granular, come up higher and then zoom in a little bit so that you're not casting a shadow on your piece. Choose the focal point if you want to hit that focus button in the middle of your picture and then snap a few shots. So get a few good pictures making sure your horizon is straight and your photograph is not at any kind of angle. You want all sides to be as square as possible and that's where the grid lines really help and it also helps if you pull back a bit and you can see all those edges of your photo. So get a really good shot. The next thing you want to do um, when you've shot that is you want to make sure you've photographed it in a high resolution in the first place is you want to look at those images and see if anything stands out at you that you want to fix even before you do a test print and in some cases that test print is going to be the big reveal so sometimes the camera is going to pick up things that you don't really see with your eye or maybe you discount with your eye so here's an example this was just a test print before i finished the piece and um, this test print i can see like a fleck right here in my piece and in some cases it I didn't like how light the green was up high I don't even know if I'd steam pressed it yet and I didn't really like the way um, the land went up sort of at this shape I wanted it to be a little more straight or just a little different so if you do a test print then you can step back and evaluate the piece and decide if you want to make any changes before you go forward. The test prints, you can make your first initial test prints at home if you have the ability or you can send them to a local print shop like uh, Kinko's FedEx is what I use here to run these prints and I'm always printing them on a cardstock uh, like a 100 pound or 110 pound finish of cardstock which is kind of a low sheen and they do have paper you'll see it says archival quality so if you haven't used FedEx to run some prints you might check it out they have a pretty nice system where you can just upload your image but this is what I do I get the image exactly how I want it, meaning the artwork exactly how I want it after doing a test print and evaluating my photos, getting rid of any stray hairs if it's kind of fibrous or hairy. And then what I'm going to do is bring that image into a photo editor. I use Photoshop myself. Um, for those of you who don't use Photoshop, you can look for an online tool. I saw today that Wix, you don't even have to have a Wix website, but Wix.com has a photo editor where you can resize the photo if you want. And my encouragement is to make the photo the size that you want the finished piece to be. And you can see that my uh, piece here is pretty close to that size as well. So photograph at high quality, get it all cleaned up, and then resize that image in a photo editor, meaning crop it, crop off all the edges, get it all clean, and then I drop it into a Word document because you can put two together and print one page for one price and get two prints for that one price. So is everybody with us? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, drop those two graphics and then you can just save this as a PDF. Even if you, I use Microsoft Word and you can print to a PDF, that's how I'm going to print the graphics. So that way I know it's not going to change. Sometimes when you wanna just shoot a photo, you get confused because it's asking you about full page or not or whatever, but just try this at least for your test prints to drop those into Word so that you can control the exact size. Even in Word, you can go in and control the size. What I like to do is to get my mounting, um, we're gonna look at this too, the mats. Choose a mat that you're going to be using for your photos and measure these inner dimensions. You want your image to be just a smidge larger. Mine was a little close this time, but you want your image to be just a smidge larger so that you have no white space showing. 
unless you do want white space and then you want it to be the exact amount of right space, white space, you know, for that. So if you put it into words, you could just nudge it a little bit and make it just the right size that you want or you can do that in your, in your photo editor as well. Um, and then print those out. Print those out at the same place. Uh, print those out at the same place. Wherever you're going to have your prints done, we're going to share a few with you. But when you're happy with the final, final piece and you're looking at them, then you can go to print and print your final artwork that you'll be sharing and or modifying. So for printing, you can stick with the local print shop. Some of us have really nice print shops in our town where they will even offer to photograph your artwork or scan it for a price, of course. Um, but if you're doing all of that back-end work yourself, then you can just print either at FedEx or if you want to go a little higher end, local print house, FedEx, Kinko's, pretty nice prints. But if you want to go to a little higher end, I do have a resource I want to share with you. And um, am I missing anything I should comment on before I go there, Jordan? Uh, just a few people kind of commented on how to get a good picture is to use like a neutral gray background. Like it. Uh, it helps with the color correction. And mm -hmm. then also if you're having trouble with shadows overhead, you can pin it to like a cork board or something and get a side shot from that. I love that. I love that. I used to work for an architectural designer. He made parts like really expensive door pulls and stuff. And he always told me to overshoot to shoot on an overcast day. Something I like to do sometimes is uh, I have like a very light linen couch and I'll put my artwork on the couch and I have a window next to me, but the blinds aren't, you know, the sun isn't coming right on them. I have E windows, whatever, there's no glare. So have some nice light source around you or if we shoot in the studio here, it's always really bright. So find yeah, some nice natural daylight is the best because you do want to color correct and we're going to look a little bit at some color results as well it won't just be the photo it'll also be the paper so i want to share a resource with you that i came across it's called stack house um we don't get any money for sharing these with you i just reached out to these folks and said hey i want to do you know some prints what do you got and they're called Stack House. You can order your prints online. You can order a sample of papers. Oh, great. Jordan threw up a, a little thing there. Uh, they gave us a link, a, a coupon code for y'all, and we don't get any commissions. So use them or don't use them, but they were really nice to me. The coupon is Living Felt. You'll be able to order a free sample of paper, and maybe uh, we could see a little overhead of this, Jordan. Mm -hmm. So they have all of these really nice papers. This is called William Turner, Cold Press Bright, Photo Rag, which I used, Hot Press Bright, uh, Fine Art, I, I didn't even try all these papers. Premium Laser, so many things, metallic, and even these uh, canvas prints. So they have so many great papers and you can try out and see what papers work for your art. So if you're going for something a little finer, then you might check out these folks at Stackhouse. When I did, well, they're also gonna give you a piece of paper that talks about the papers, but I think the print tells the whole story. And I ordered a variety of prints for them from them, and I asked them to please mark on the back what paper it was, because I was doing the same image on multiple papers. And that's what they did for me. They marked them all and then gave us that coupon code to share with y'all. So I really appreciated that. So thank you to them. Uh, you'll be able to get 25% off two orders in a row. And I encourage you to try a few different resources to see what type of paper or what type of process or which printer gives you the colors and the look and the feel that you want for your finished pieces. Now these guys, these pieces I think cost probably between three, five, six dollars depending on that paper that you choose. The um, ones that I'm getting from Kinko's, the, the better paper is more like a buck thirty-three and there may be other resources out there. I heard of one today I'm going to check out but I'll wait until you know I have the results. So try a few different ones and see if your photo is good, how good is that paper and that print quality to get the image that you're wanting to get. So check out those folks. Now, once you have your prints, then you have an option of what you wanna do. So 
when I get a print like this, the next thing we can do, if we're gonna go simple, is just to cut and mat it and prepare it for sale. So pretend it's something a little fancier <laughs> than some of these I have. I like to use my grid mat and my rotary cutter and my quilting rulers to get a really straight cut. You need straight lines, so don't use your scissors on these. Line it up with your mat and get a full coverage there and then I tape it off with this uh, tape which we're going to share with you in, in the resources. It's called Marvelous Tape. It is really nice. We use it on our uh, little bulletin board here but it's good for um, like binding those two pieces together and I believe it's also acid free. So all the things I'm sharing with you are acid free but you just want a really good clean alignment. This little setup here, and I've shared something very similar before that I got from um, Blick. We're sharing in the resources, and I think we're going to uh, share a link to those external resources, things that we're not selling. This is a whole little package. Let me get it right there. It's a whole little package where you get the backer board, you get the mat, and then you get this clear little window. If you're doing a booth, a craft fair, a holiday fair, I don't know, in any little show you have, having a little bin with your prints in them like this ready to frame is going to be really appealing to people rather than just having some naked prints exposed. This is going to keep them from getting any fingerprints on them. It's going to make them ready to sell. And what I love is that you can also tuck in your collaterals, whether it's your business card or your little info cards about your art and your style, right into the package and then send this off to the customer just like that. So I do encourage you to just take it all the way and mat it. It doesn't even cost that much. And we're going to look at the cost and the price together here in just a little bit. So you can sell your beautiful landscapes like some of those ones we already saw, just packaged and ready to go, or it's okay. Or you can customize them in a way that, I think we're gonna look at that next, right Jordan? That's what's next on our list, is to customize. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're like me and your artwork is, you know, kind of average, not all that exciting. I'm, you know, I see the world very flat, colorful, and comedic sometimes, <laughs> cartoonish, quite honestly, even. So for me, these little pebble people really kind of like speak to me because it's about the, you know, my level of sophistication. So what we have here is a little framed piece of artwork, kind of like what we've already looked at. This right here is one of the prints I got from Stackhouse. And what I like about it is that it's textured. I think that this was the photo rag, quite honestly. The other thing I like about it is I feel like the colors best matched my original artwork. This turquoisey blue up in the corner looked correct, um, whereas some, one of the other images I did did not, like it didn't really match, so I'd have to find that paper. And then what we do is just bring in some little fun parts. Uh, we'll share these two, these tiny little pebble uh, beach rocks. They're very tiny pieces. They're like the kind you would use in an aquarium, little tiny um, driftwood, and then maybe even some shells. So this would be a fun customization, say that you can write the names of the people down below. Maybe this is John and Mary and uh, Mr. Magoo and Buffy. You know, they're, they're, two, they're two pets and even that they were on some vacation in 2023 at a beach. It'd be such a sweet way to do a customization right on the print and then sell this to your customer framed if you want. Even if you want to complete it all the way with the frame, you can do that. And this little one piece of artwork can replicate itself over and over and earn you money and bring people lots of joy just by remembering, remembering a vacation that they had with their family. So here's a, the, one of the ideas we had, we were talking is either the family could have collected shells or you can add maybe little shells that you think would complement it. And before framing it, I would use a nice pen. I really like these fiber, uh, these fabric castell pens. I always have them in my life. Practice your handwriting on, and your pens on your practice papers. 
All right. I told Jordan, I always write this. Do I like this pen? Do I like this pen? And, and I have terrible handwriting, so I would have to practice 100 times on someone's name. Um, but practice with your pens first before writing on your mat. So in this case, I would write the family's name here and then where they were and the year because it would be like a little memento and glue glue the shell on just like we did the pebble people and i used my favorite now silicone liquid glue this is my favorite stuff right here for especially for doing the fiber art so the driftwood devin wants to know where i got the driftwood uh devin this driftwood came from etsy uh i also have lots of driftwood in my collection from when i lived pretty much on the coast in California, but these little tiny pieces of driftwood are what you want to look for. So search on Etsy for the small driftwood, at least for pictures like this, it should be tiny. So if we were to look at our, um, let's look at this piece right here. I think we have one ready to go and I just lost my, I'll grab it. It doesn't matter. So for a little piece like this, I would drop, you know, find where you want your little piece of driftwood. Let's pick our people. I haven't I haven't picked these people. I just dropped all my people on the floor. But so we'll it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you can play with it. So what's the couple? It's me, I'll be the the wide bottom. Here we go. There we go. Get these two together. They should look like they're having just the best time. And maybe are the kids with them or is a dog with them? Or maybe instead of a tent, you want a little camper. Or maybe you have a whole family around a campfire or something. But if you're making a commission for someone, whether it's a friend, family, or a, a customer who's new to you, you could do something just like this and send them a photo to see do they like that or do they want changes. It'd be such a fun way to play with it before you ever glue them down. What do we think? They are loving the pebble people. <laughs> oh, good. Now, some people get really creative with the pebble people and they give them arms or legs or the dogs like go from just a blob to getting ears and a tail. And I wasn't really ready to commit to that. But I think it's really fun and you can play with, you know, what what shape the critters are because they can be in different positions. And these all look, look a little dark on the camping, but you're camping. It should be dark at some point when you're roasting the marshmallows anyway. So I, I think that's really fun. And for the frames, what we really want to do is look at shadow boxes. So the shadow box, this is not the expensive shadow boxes that we shared with y'all a while ago. These are relatively inexpensive, but I have two different um, frames here and two different qualities. So let me just tell you about these. This one um, I got for a pack of three. Um, I'm Yeah, I got a pack of three. I think I got a pack of three for both of them. But these white ones were less than $7 and these ones average out to $10 and change each. The difference is uh, when they're both, they're, neither of them are very expensive quality uh, and we took the glass out for your viewing pleasure. But what you'll do is you'll you'll take your finished piece, and I'll dump off my, my rock family here, uh, just drop it into the frame there, and then just put the backer board right back on. Um, so you can get an idea which frame do you like. And the one that I have that is below it is just is just the same. So you can see which one you like. Now this one, they're both, I don't know, this one, this one says sturdy wood. <laughs> but I took it apart and I showed Jordan that all the inner parts are completely covered with this wood grain. It's basically like a wood grain overlay and all the inner parts are covered with it as well. Whereas this one, as soon as you open it up, like you can tell if you saw already that, you know, it's just covered with some white tape or whatever. But this is definitely the more economical version and I think either one present really well and I think people would be pretty happy with them. So you can go for the the, you know, um, print, print in a sleeve solution to a customization, to a customization framed if you want. And these are basic suggestions for taking that one piece of art and just stretching it a little bit further or a lot further depending on how popular the idea is with your customer base. Um, so when you 
look at making these things, we wanted to help you at least look at uh, pricing a little bit and think about what things cost and how you might price it. Oh, let's see. Laura says, do you put the glass back in after selling? Yeah, Laura, put the glass in. You're going to want to, you know, bubble wrap that really well before you give it to the customer or ship it, whichever uh, is the case. Definitely bubble wrap it. And I'll tell you, uh, I do believe I shared both these frames in the resources and we'll look at that, that this frame, each one comes in its own box. So quite honestly, you could use that inner box and then, you know, box that up in a priority mailbox and that would be very secure all the way. Whereas the white frames came three in one box with some, you know, styrofoam on the side. So either way, shipping priority mail or with priority mail packaging should be pretty good. But yes, you can ship it with the glass back in. We just took it out so you don't get the glare from the lights and the cameras. Um, so Laura says, do you frame actual wool pieces, not prints with or without glass? It's totally up to you, Laura, but I'll tell you, if you use a shadow box frame, then when you do that, you're using an acid-free map, and then that is the barrier between the wool and the glass. That's the best thing you have going for you. So you can absolutely put the wool behind glass, but it is ideal if the wool is not touching the glass. Now, I live in a very humid place. I have plenty of felted artworks where wool is touching the glass. I'll tell you the truth. Because my husband, if, it, if he calls it art, <laughs> he wants it behind glass. And there, I have pieces that are, you know, bumpy and textural. The wool is touching the glass. And um, I don't expect it to be around for a thousand years or even 200 years. <laughs> Maybe till I'm dead. So 40, 50 years. And I don't care after that. But we're not getting any moisture issues or sweat issues because it's in a climate controlled space. So I'm not worried about it. But if you do have the, a barrier between the glass, and the wool, then you're doing the right thing, technically. Okay, uh, we wanna talk about pricing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's look at some numbers, just for fun. So, I came across a, a great resource that I thought, you know, it's a good starting point. Everybody's artwork is different. One of my favorite artists, she's a licensed artist, she's not a felt artist, she's a licensed artist, um, so her work is reproduced. She also sells prints of it, and she sells her prints for a pretty darn reasonable price. They're really not that expensive, and they're Zicle prints, right? Spelled like Zicle, but Zicle prints. We're not really talking about Zicle prints here. We're just talking about nice, high-quality prints that are archival quality for your customers. Let's look at some pricing and costing for that. I think Jordan's gonna throw up some numbers here for us of things that we looked at. So it was uh, painting by Justin, painting by <laughs> Justin. I found this YouTube channel, painting by Justin. He hasn't done a video in a long time, but he had a really interesting pricing formula for painting. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna build off that for pricing our artwork. He likes a length times width calculation, and he breaks it down to whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and I thought, that's a starting point. Let's look at it. This piece right here is 4.5 by 6.5 when you measure the inner side. If we do that length times width, we're going to come up with 29.25. And we said, well, so there's some measure, some calculation of that 29.25 that you would charge for just a base print, right? Just a, just a print, not even in the matting or the fancy little packaging. So you can choose what you feel comfortable with. A 0.33, 33% would be a $10 print, maybe. Maybe I think my little camping scene right here is worth a, a $10 print for it's just the artwork cost. Um, maybe I think it's worth $15. Maybe I think it's 20. Maybe your artwork is just fantastic and you think it's worth 25 or 35. It's really up to you. But maybe if you're starting to set a price for yourself, let's start with a baseline of artwork, length times width, times some fraction that you feel comfortable with. Then we want to tally up the costs of all of our materials. In this case, we have our print, which you'll see if, if I go with my FedEx Kinko's price, a uh, dollar thirty-three. I got two to a page, so I'm going to charge sixty cents, dollar twenty, sixty cents, seventy cents, whatever you feel comfortable with, uh, and not charge. That's my cost for the piece, um, plus the mat. My this this whole little mat package here, the mat with the backer board and the plastic sleeve, cost a dollar fifty each, 
which I think is pretty darn reasonable to really up level uh, the value of your art. Um, so those pieces alone, if I want to add pebbles and driftwood, meh, maybe a buck for those. And if I add the frame, let's say this frame is 650. That, if this were a print, this is my rope, but if this were a print, that would make the cost of these materials $9.60. We're gonna round everything up. So let's call this a materials cost of $10 and you're gonna charge 20. So if everybody would, I should have done this a minute ago, would you please take out a pen and a piece of paper? This is a really important exercise. Everyone have a pen and piece of paper and please write with me. Now just, just do it. I don't have to say, oh, Marie's being goofy. Yes, please do it. <laughs> I would like you to please write, I value myself. I value my time. I value my art. I value my money. All of this thing, this whole thing is you, it's your heart, it's your expression, it's your time, and it's also your money. So every material cost that you spend, you must charge at least two times. You can charge more, but you have to charge at least two times your personal investment. For your art, for that price up there that you're going to pick, choose a number that you feel good about. You feel good about sending that print off, that artwork off to somebody, and you don't feel bad about it at all. And oh, by the way, that goes the same for your original artwork. If you sell that piece, that price should be a price that you feel good about it and don't negotiate, please, don't negotiate. So value yourself, get your money back, and then we're gonna add these things together. So let's say that I'm going to charge $10 for my, uh, $10 for the print of my art, plus my costs. I'm gonna double all those costs, so that's 30 bucks. But then I wanna charge for the Pebble people, and I'm gonna write the name of the family here and when their holiday was, and I'm gonna package it all up and, and ship it. So what do you wanna charge for the Pebble people? You know, maybe it's two bucks a, two bucks a Pebble person. <laughs> or, or animal, maybe it's 220, maybe it's 225, something like that. Let's say that I'm gonna charge uh, another 10 bucks for these. Then my final price is gonna be somewhere between, you know, 30 and 50, $55 for this size. You go bigger, it's gonna be more. Go bigger, it's gonna go more. So what do we think about that? What's everyone saying? Very interesting. A lot of people are finding it very helpful. Um, Judy Phillips says she's not tracking where the 29.25 comes from. Oh. 4.5 times 6.5. So that is the 4.5 inches tall by 6.5 wide. When we do that, we get this number. It's just, you know, it's like a you're charging by size since it's a print, and that's just the value of the art. So we're saying it's 29.5. You could charge then for just the artwork value itself somewhere between 10 and $30. And I said, well, let's just say I see my art on the low end and I charge $10 for the value of the print, but the, of the artwork itself, but I need to charge for the paper that it's printed on, for the matting and backer board that it comes with. And then if I charge for a frame and any customization of like the Pebble People, you know, memory keeper thing as well. We have to add all of that in. And then if you're shipping it to your customer, you have to charge for absolutely every component of that shipping. If you're putting bubble wrap in there, if you're putting extra paper in there, if you're um, putting an extra insurance on it, anything there is, you have to get all of your money back that you spend on wrapping that thing up for safe transportation. All of that really, really counts. So, other thoughts, questions, contributions to this, Jordan? What do we have? People are saying triple is totally normal as well. Triple yeah. your costs. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of great tips going around in chat right yeah. now. Yeah, the only thing you'll have to see is like, it's really gonna come down to what the market will bear. So if it's not selling, you know, then you can look at what of those costs have you tripled? Is that somewhere where you can bring it down? Because if it's just not selling, either you're at the wrong show 
<laughs> you know, if you know which is great, then maybe you're just at the wrong show. Like almost if you're doing a show, whether it's like a, a fall fair or a holiday fair or a spring show or whatever, sometimes you're at a show where, look, the magic price point is between five and ten dollars and you'll sell these guys, you know, all day long, ten, twelve, fifteen dollars um, or buttons or magnets. But I wanted to give you ideas for selling prints rather than selling like postcards and greeting cards because it's almost the same amount of effort and the same amount of price investment on your point, but the percepted, percepted value is higher on something that's frameable than a card that we get and we stick it to a, some memo board or poster board somewhere and eventually probably recycle it. So your bigger value is gonna be on something that's frameable. So Linda Day says, what would you charge if it were original felted object project? And Linda, my pricing strategy, I just call it a no regret pricing. And that is, you've got to be able to surrender that piece and feel really good about it, maybe so good that you would be willing to do it again. Because once you give up that original piece, it's no longer in your possession. You can't do anything with it. So I appreciate it. In meeting before the show today, I was talking to Jordan about Mr. Diesel behind me, um, who, like, who knew I would fall in love with a pit bull, like the bully breed. So now we're like the pit bull family. My husband is like ready for the, th th not ready for the third, but already <laughs> telling me about the third. And today we're six weeks and three days into our new pit bull puppy. Yeah, she's, she's a rescue and uh, seven months of just a bundle of bundle of puppiness. So, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Diesel here, years ago, someone offered uh, to, to purchase him and I haven't put him up for sale. Uh, that person had a special interest and the price I asked for, she couldn't afford, but I wasn't willing to let it go for any less. Like to me, it was worth that amount to keep it. And so that's what I would say to you is like, put a price on something where as if, if, if somebody's not willing to pay it, it's because that's how much it really means to you and you want to keep it. Some people, I have a friend who is a brilliant artist and is always churning out art and I own several of her pieces and she's like, yeah, get it out there because she's on to the next. For her, it's all about the process of creating a new and for me I'm such a teacher I always love having the teaching references around for people to see so it's very very personal and um, you got to ask yourself what are you making it for so that is to say if you want to make money from your art then you're going to want to find that right size that right time commitment and that right price that you're able to make the kind of income you want on selling those original pieces i know people who sell their you know large pieces for twelve hundred fifteen hundred two thousand dollars some that sell them brilliant artworks for four or five hundred bucks so it's all over the map to be one that you feel really good about this is great. People are saying they are, you're giving them ideas for things to consider that they haven't previously considered. Oh, good. Price. Oh, good. I was hoping it'd be at least be a seed planting, if not like a replicate does like seed planting. I know you're going to have great ideas. So question, Maria, I've had requests to have a photo shoot with my 3D pieces and have them printed as a card. You mean people want them as a card? I would still say consider like is it a is that a licensing something wants to do that's something to explore and i would talk to other artists who have licensing work done uh, so consider that i have some pieces here that people have sent us that are cards and um so here's june yamaguchi who did uh who did the laughing dolls and the singing dolls so she sent these cards you know that they're just so fun and cheery so these are really fun and then this is from our friend uh Karen Oswalt, uh, and she sent us these fun little postcards and pictures, and they're super sweet. So one is, I have a very hard time sending them out because I only have one of each one, but I, I keep them for myself, but I haven't had them framed. So I still say, you know, ask yourself whether it's like wall worthy. If you think it's something wall worthy, then maybe go a little bit bigger and consider making that print uh, frameable. But I definitely have, cards like this have drawer drawers a uh, drawer with cards from friends of their artwork and i save them back i do have a friend who's a photographer and i'll tend she, she'll give me cards and i'll send those out but some of them are hard they're hard to let go of <laughs> if i only have one so i hope that helps any other final thoughts on that 
I don't think so. Uh, I think we have so many some people more. are complimenting on how awesome this live hang is. Oh, good, good, good. I'm so glad. I hope it helps you think a little bit about pricing your art, about replicating your art. Check out the Stack House. I, I, I promise I'll pursue that other resource. Uh, compare your colors, get good photos, and I think we have a few more BFF felts that we'd like to share. Y'all are so inspiring to us. We just want to roll through this so you can see what each other is creating. We hope you get ideas from each other. Don't copy each other. No, just share ideas. Riff off of each other. Gain the inspiration. Everybody is so talented and felt is such a free way to express. I can see so many of these being family holidays or seeing little pebble people on the trail somewhere. These are so fun. Each is just magical in its own way. Love that. It's like a little fall forest, that one. Such a sweet, sweet, sweet. Love all the frames that everyone's finding too. Like that tire swing. So great, y'all. Thank you so much for sharing your art with us. Listen, everybody hangs out all week on Living Felt Friends in Facebook. Our newsletter comes out on Saturdays. If you're not getting that, go to our website, click the little orange button down below. But you know, if you've ever ordered anything from us that we're gonna send you that newsletter. Listen, we don't have a show next week, but in two weeks, we're gonna be back with some great fun. So in two weeks, is that when Joyce is here? Nope, fall, fall fun. One okay. Day. I'm going to do something fun you might want to do yourself, you might want to do with the grandkids. We're going to look at some new ways to do something maybe some of us have been already doing. So we're going to kick off a little bit of fall flare, not next week, right? The week after. But the week after, so we're back on 816 and that day, that week or that day? That day. That day we are going in the pre-launch, which means the early bird sale starts for Kimberly Zars Extreme Faces class. You're going to want to get in this class and have some fun. Her faces are famous, quite honestly. Her expressions are unmatched, although a lot of people try and copy them. You're going to get to learn her tips and techniques in a felting tutorials class on feldingtutorials.com. So that class kicks off that week and we hope you'll join us then. Until then, be extra good to yourself. Remember that little note you wrote down? Put it on your bathroom mirror, put it on your bulletin board, put it on your refrigerator, put it in your car, put it somewhere. I value myself, we value you. Make it a great week, y'all. Thank you, bye.